On April 6, 1997, a family of four stopped here at this rest stop after attending the Jehovah Witness retreat. That retreat was held in Johnson City, Tennessee. Their home was just a couple hours away from there. I guess this spot was somewhere kind of in the middle. But they were traveling, it was a young family. They were traveling with two young children. A six-year-old daughter named Tabitha and a two-year-old son named Peter. Now when you're traveling with young kids, of course, a two-hour drive usually does mean a stop or two along the way for various different reasons, whether it's they wanna get out and stretch or they got to go to the bathroom or they're hungry. These kind of things happen. So they did make that stop here. Perhaps they were gonna eat some lunch. Perhaps they just needed to go to the bathroom or stretch their legs. While they were here, they met up with a group of young teenagers from the ages of 14 through 20. This was a group of six kids. The six kids kidnapped them from this rest stop, took them down the road, and shot them. Three members of the family ended up dead. The fourth one, the youngest, was in bad shape and has never fully recovered from that day. We're gonna tell you more about the story, take you to the death location and to the cemetery, and we cordially invite you to come along. The Lilla Lids were a family of four from Powell, Tennessee. The father was 34-year-old Vidar, who was married to 28-year-old Delfina. They had a six-year-old daughter named Tabitha and a two-year-old son named Peter. When the Lilla Lid family arrived to the rest stop, the mother, Delfina, took their daughter, Tabitha, in to use the restroom, while the father, Vidar, stayed outside with Peter. And it was outside where their father noticed a group of these youngsters, this group of six youngsters. They were probably wearing all black. They were into all that kind of stuff. And the father wanted to minister to them. Of course, that's very important to Jehovah's Witnesses anyway. We've all gotten that knock on our door at some point in time in our lives, probably multiple times. That's a very important part of their faith. They want to witness. They want to share their faith with other people. On top of that, this family had just attended a conference with a group of Jehovah's Witnesses. And so therefore, they were really pumped about sharing their faith. So this father said, this looks like a great group of people to talk to. He walked over and began talking to two of the girls. After a little while, he was joined by some others in the group. The group of youngsters included 20-year-old Joseph Reisner, 19-year-old Dean Mullins, 18-year-olds Crystal Sturgill and Natasha Cornett, 17-year-old Karen Howell, and 14-year-old Jason Bryant. While Delfina went to the bathroom with Tabitha, Vidar apparently walked up to Natasha and Karen. He's holding baby Peter in his arms and he hands them a pamphlet about his faith. He obviously could not have picked a worse group of young people to engage in a conversation with. Natasha Cornette was kind of the leader of the group of these six young people. She grew up very poor, dirt poor. She never really worked, never had a real job. She did do some occasional babysitting. Despite that, her family members say she was actually a straight A student all the way up until the eighth grade. It was at that point where perhaps the home life or something got the best of her and she started getting depressed. She started to hurt herself. She actually got married on her 17th birthday. And by that point in time, she was done with school. She dropped out of school. She had been arrested multiple times. She was abusing alcohol. She got into the cult. She liked to drink blood. She also enjoyed many different types of drugs, including ecstasy, heroin, and cocaine. Her marriage was a failure. It lasted only for about a year. Her mother was a lady by the name of Madonna Wallen. Now, she was one of those mothers, which many of you probably went through this if you've gone through high school, where there's always that house where everybody just kind of hangs out because the parents, what you would consider are cool, they're allow all kinds of crazy stuff to go on at their house this is what happened and it became kind of the party trailer all the kids could get together they could drink and do drugs there they played with ouija boards and they did all this occult type stuff at her mom's house at madonna's house her mom allowed all this to go on despite the fact natasha had actually been arrested for assaulting and threatening to kill her with a knife and the mother refused to press charges against natasha when that happened now, all three of these girls apparently grew up in abusive situations. Eventually, all of them got into drugs, alcohol, and self-harm. Crystal Sturgill had an awful home life and ended up moving in with Natasha Cornette and her mom at this party trailer. 
Karen Howell dropped out of school when she was just 16. Uh, two of the kids in the group, two of the guys, this was Dean Mullins and Joe Reisner, they actually had no history of drugs, no history of alcohol, and no previous arrest. They were only in the group because of two of these girls. They were actually dating two of the girls. Dean was dating Natasha, and Joe was dating Karen. Now, this youngest one of the group, Jason Bryant, he had a very bad history. Actually, when he was apparently three years old, he started drinking when he was nine. He started using drugs, so as you can imagine, he had a terrible home life as well. Also, on top of all that, he had a very low IQ. He was not a bright kid. Now, while Vidar was talking to Natasha and Karen, Natasha stepped away. She went over to the others in the group, and she started plotting out the idea that, hey, let's take this van from these guys. They had this large Dodge conversion van, the Lily Ledge did. Now, the group of youngsters had left town. They decided to leave all together and head to New Orleans. Apparently, they were heading out there to meet the author, Anne Rice, who was a hero of theirs. The problem was they were riding in this small Chevy Citation that belonged to Joe Reisner's mother, and this car was starting to have some mechanical issues. They figured if they were going to make it to New Orleans, if they are going to meet their hero, they would need a better running vehicle. Plus, they'd like to have more room. The Citation was small. This Dodge van was very nice and large. So the others agreed to, Nika to Natasha's plan. Then Joseph and Jason walked up together to Vidar, and Joseph told him, I hate to do you this way, but we are going to have to take you with us for your van. Vidar, of course, began begging, please take anything you want. Take my car keys, take my money, take my wallet, take the van. But just leave me and my family here at this rest stop. Joseph said no. He pulled out a gun. He made Vidar drive while he pointed the gun at him. The entire Lilith Lid family was in the van, along with Joseph, Natasha, Karen, and Jason. Dina and Crystal were following behind in the citation. They made a very short trip. The next exit down the freeway, they got off. Delfina was singing during this process. She's trying to calm Tabitha down, but Natasha yelled at her and told her to stop. Eventually, they arrived here at this quiet, lonely, desolate gravel road called Payne Hollow Lane. And this road just... It, it has the feel and the look to it of something you would see in a horror movie. Only this was real life. It was at this point where the group of youngsters ordered the Lilliled family out of the van and out onto the side of the road. They lined them up right in this area here and someone began shooting. The other five members of the group all later claimed that it was the youngest Jason Bryant who did all the shooting. It's a little bit of an issue with this story, though, because there were two different guns used, and also because it almost seems like they might have teamed up to try to blame this all on the young one, the guy with the low IQ, the guy who can't really defend himself. So that hasn't really been resolved over the years. Vidar was shot first, and then all the other members of the family were shot as well. The young criminals then noticed that their vehicle, the Citation, was stuck on the side of the road, apparently in some mud, maybe stuck against some sort of a tree a stump or something like that. And so they left it there with the lights on. They did take the license plate off, but they did not think about the VIN number, so they didn't scratch that off or do anything to that. It's just sitting there on display. They loaded up into the little uh, van and they took off. Now, at this point, they decided they're not going to head to New Orleans after all. They're not going to go meet their hero, Anne Rice, because they feel like they're going to be needing to run. They're going to need to escape, so they decided to head to Mexico to get out of the country and go hide there. Someone who lived near here heard the gunshots and called 911, telling the dispatchers they heard something that sounded like children on a playground. Now, police arrived here. They see the citation. They see the lights on. As they're checking this out, they look over and notice the horrific sight of these bodies in the ditch. Vidar and Delfina were apparently laying on their backs in the ditch with their feet facing to the road. They each had a child laying across their chest, apparently in the shape of a cross. Now, also, there was a distinct pattern to the shots in the chest. They were each shot multiple times, Vidar and Delfina, in their chest in a triangular shape. Supposedly, this was in the form when you put them together that it made into a form of a pentagon. Tabitha and Peter were still alive when police arrived, so they were airlifted to a hospital in Knoxville. 
Tabitha was kept on life support for about 24 hours, and then an uncle who had been put in charge of the family had taken her off of the life support. Now, many of her organs were donated to save lives of others, including her liver, heart, kidneys, and spleen. Peter ended up losing an eye and needed many surgeries, but he is still alive today and married. Now, it didn't take long, obviously, for police to figure out who committed these murders. The citation was, of course, traced back to Joe's mom through the VIN number. Police quickly figured out who the six people were who had been riding in it because they are all missing from their home and they were all a group that hung out together anyway. It was easy for police to put this together. Eventually, the van was stopped at the Mexican border. We're not sure if this happened on the way in to Mexico or some other point in time, but they were stopped pretty quickly. And when police began to search the vehicle, they found keys to the Lillilid family home on Crystal. Peter's social security card and Tabitha's Miss Kitty diary were on Karen and a picture of Vidar and Tabitha Natasha was holding on to. They were all taken back to a jail in Tennessee where an angry mob of people were waiting for them when they arrived. All six ended up pleading guilty to first degree murder. This is in exchange for the death penalty being removed. All six were then sentenced to life in prison with no possibility for parole. Vidar, Delphina, and Tabitha are all buried here at Edgewood Cemetery in Knoxville. As you can see, people are still leaving flowers on their grave. The Lillilid family grave 